Hey there, this is Akshay Nandan, and in this video, or we can say in this playlist, I'm going to teach you how you can create a simple currency converter application using Open Exchange API. So the main twist point of this application, or we can say uh, of this API, is that it is we are not using an API which can directly convert one currency to another currency. So we are going to get a simple map in which all the currency values will be given, and we have to do some mathematics to reach to our final result, right? Don't worry, I'm going to tell you everything. Uh, each and every line of this code is available on GitHub and you can access the, this repository on my GitHub account. You can go over here and you can search this currency Flutter web app and you can access this complete code repository, right? So now why I'm doing this? Because if you will directly go for such an API which can directly convert from one currency to another currency, then you have to pay. That is a premium feature of, a, uh, of that API, right? So let's go to that API and let's see which api i'm using but before that if you are not following me on instagram you can see that i post something amazing stuff on my instagram page and you can follow it right perfect so i'm using this uh, website that is open exchange rates and they have an api so i'm going to use their api but they have uh, some pricing also and if you want to get an api which can directly convert from one currency to another then you have to uh, buy their premium version of their api right so if you are new on this website, you can directly create your account and you will get your API IDs in this app IDs. So you don't have to use the same app ID because I'm going to delete it. You have to create your own app ID and then you have to work, right? Or you want to create your, uh, if you want to create two apps, then you can create one more app ID. In the free version, they provide the feature of creating two app IDs, right? So now you let's go to this getting started and let's see uh, what are their documentation. So you can see that they are having these endpoints. So what we can get, we can get the latest data of all the currencies of the currency rates or we can say the exchange rates. Then they have the historical, then they have currencies, then they have time series and then they also have a convert. But when you will go on convert, you will think that why are we not using this convert and we can directly convert one currency to another. So you will be able to read that currency conversion requests are currently available for clients on the unlimited plan. That means you have to buy the premium version and then you will be able to access this uh, uh, access this API of directly converting, right? So we are going to use this latest dot, uh, latest dot JSON. So it is going to give you a directly, it is going to give you a map, you can see. So this map has a base currency of USD and it is having uh, like one USD is equal to 3.6 AED, one USD is equal to 66.6 .6 66.8 USD. So we, we are going to get this API. We are going to use this API and then we are going to do some mathematics and we will reach to our final result. Let's say you want to convert from one AMD to one ARS. So what are you going to do? So first of all, we are going to convert one AMD to USD, then those many USD to this ARS. Perfect. Or we can say Australian dollars, anything you want to, anything you can take, right? So we are going to use this API for converting one currency to another currency. Then uh, we also have this currencies.json. So in this, you get list of all the currencies that are there. And why are we going to use this API? Because we have this dropdown list. So in this dropdown list, I don't want to uh, like manually write all these currencies. So this dropdown list data is coming from this endpoint. Perfect. I hope the project is sounding interesting and I hope you are ready with your computers on. So now I'm going to walk you through the complete code. So in this playlist of around four to five videos, I'm going to walk you through the complete project so that if you are accessing my repository also, you will have a good idea that what is where, right? And you can create your own project also. I'm going to, uh, so I'll try my best to explain as much as I can, right? So now, first of all, uh, I hope you have created your account on this website. Uh, and then you also have your app ID or we can say the API token. So let's see my project structure. And if you have followed my tech news playlist, creating a tech news application in Flutter using an API, you will not face any problem in this application. It will be like similar to that, right? So first of all, if I show you my project structure, you can see that in the lib. Uh, first of all, I also have an assets folder in which I have put this JPG. Uh, yes, this JPG for the background and I have the DM Sans uh, regular font. And this font you can get from googlefonts.com, right? So I wanted to use this custom font, that's why I'm using that. Now in this lib, in this lib folder, 
I have components folder, I have functions, I have models, I have screens, and then I have utils, right? So these are the folders that I'm having. Perfect. So let's go to this utils, a very simple folder in which I'm only having one single file of key. So this is my app ID uh, that you have copied from the website and you don't have to use this similar app ID, please, right? Perfect. You have to create your own app ID. Now this, uh, this was about utils folder, which is about utilities. You can store all the constant values, colors, then keys and everything else in this utils folder. Now let's see the first file that is main.dart. So in this main.dart, what I'm doing, defining a simple main function, run app, then this stateless widget called my app in which I'm returning a simple material app. Now in this material app, I'm defining a title, then theme data, then I'm defining the font family so that I can use this font family wherever I'm going to use the text widget, right? So this text family or font family will be applied to all the text widgets. Then I'm having primary color. So I'm using this pink color as my primary color. Then I'm having this banner fall. So this debug banner is gone. Then home to home. So let's go to home and let's explore that. So now I am my home.dart. So from the main.dart, we have called this home.dart as home. So now forget about all these initial variables. I'm using comments so that readability of the code becomes easy. So when you will be uh, accessing my repository, right? So ju just forget about these initial variables. We are going to see these variables in the next part. First of all, I'm running this init state. So init state function will be called and you can see that I'm updating these variables, result and all currencies. And how I'm updating these variables, I'm calling this fetch rates function and fetch currencies function. So this fetch currencies function, focus on this. This is a fetch currencies function, which is going to return me all the currencies. And I'm using all the currencies in this dropdown list. Perfect. So I don't have to write manually all these currencies. So using this fetch currencies function, I'm going to get all the currencies, which will be stored in this all currencies. And later in the dropdown button, I'm going to provide this all currencies map. Or we can say a list, right? And in this fetch rates function, so fetch rates function, is nothing but it contains the currency convert part so as you can see uh, this usd let me enter usd let's say i entered five usds and let's convert them into australian dollars and when i click on convert it is going to give me this five usd is equal to 6.8 aud so this part was done by this fetch rates function so this fetch rates function is going to access the uh, text field text that is five then this selected uh, currency that is australian dollars and it is going to convert this part, right? And yes, so I think you are clear with the project structure. You are clear with the basic home.dart and what is the motive of this fetch rates function and this fetch currencies function and everything else, the designing part and uh, inside this, I also have models, how you, how you can create an API model, everything we are going to see in the next part. So till then keep coding, keep innovating and thanks a lot.